Right, so in this video we go over the formal definition of a limit. So what does it mean when we say as close as we would like to L? At the same time, what does it mean to get sufficiently close to A? Well, of course, we have looked at this in numerical ways, graphical ways, all the break ways. Well, but we need to make this into a more formal, uh, <clears throat> into a more formal way. All right. Okay, so let's consider this uh, this example right here for which we have to find the largest open interval centered at x equals 1 such that for each x in the interval the value of the function f of x equals negative 2x plus 5 is within, within point 0.1 unit of the number f of 1 equals to 3. All right, so in this case, well, we have the line graphed over here. So what we're going to do, um, so we will, so let's suppose that 3.1 is somewhere here. Actually, let me change the brush. Okay, so we have... Uh, from 3 we're going to go to 3.1 and 2.9 that is um, in this case 0.1 within the number f of 1 equals to 3 which in this case it's that limit that we want to compute now so that means and in this case we need to find what are those values of x related to those corresponding values of y well of course so we can do the same over here in the vertical direction and in this case so we need to find what are these two values right here all right so in this case well so all we do in this case is to solve the solve the equation to, or rather turn this function into an equation and solve for the values 3.1 and 2.9 all right so uh, so in this case negative 2 2x plus 5 equals to 2.9 and negative 2x plus 5 equals 3.1 so solving these two equations that's going to give us x equal to 0 0.95 and 0. Point, or rather 1.05 all right so in this case so we are centering our value of x equal to 1 which is this value right here so our lower bound and upper bound right here are 0 0.95 and 1.05 all right so that means that in this case on the y-axis our epsilon is that value that lies 0.1 unit from the limit y equals to 3 so this is our let's label here that's our epsilon and over here that's our delta value right so let's see so for our epsilon that we chose in this case of 0 0.01 that corresponds to a value of a delta equals to okay what's the difference between or the distance between 1 and 0 0.05 well that's uh, 1 and 1.05 that's one that's 0 0.05 all right now but i mean let's have a look at this in decimals so this makes more sense so let's see so i'm going to move to in this case i have the graph up to x minus to x plus 5 over here and 
of course we need to set the limit we want to approach to a equals to one so if we choose a delta in this case i chose a delta of point or rather an epsilon of point one and that means our delta is 0.5 so let's zoom it in right here so in this case it's fine if we choose a delta smaller than that notice how this region still it's still green right however if this is delta gets bigger than 0.5 see how it's not anymore within the epsilon that we want of 0.1 right okay so in this case we can choose an epsilon larger than 0.1 how about 0.2 okay so we can increase our delta to 0.1 in this case half of it all right now we need to make this argument a little bit more formal well so uh, let's see let's go back to our notes here so we have the, the epsilon delta definition for a limit Okay, so let f be defined for all x in some open interval containing the number a with possible with the possible exception that f of x may not need to be defined at, at a because again we're looking at an e at a limit, right? Not a, we're not evaluating the function at a, so it doesn't have to be defined. The statement limit of f of x as x approaches a equals to l means that for any number epsilon greater than zero there exists a corresponding number delta such that if zero less than the absolute value of x minus a less than delta then the absolute value of f of x minus l less than epsilon all right that looks like a lot of symbols um and but yeah we'll see how we're gonna look how we're gonna deal with this type of uh problem right here now let's uh let's explain what each of these sentences mean so on the one hand what do we have well on the one hand so this sentence right here x minus a tells us that x is within a unit of a of x All right it's yes of it's of x rather yeah and it's actually no it's actually delta units it's a delta units from x and this expression here it's selling it that f of x is within epsilon units of L. So that's basically the definition of the absolute value. You know, it's a distance from x to between x and a number. And in this case, it's delta units for x and it's epsilon units for L. Going back to the animation here. So uh, on the x direction, if we compare these two values in the x direction, for if it's centered at one so for epsilon point two x equals point between point nine and point point one and likewise for the y values for the limit so three uh, at w when the limit is three well for a delta of point of point two that's three point two and two point eight up and lower bound respectively all right so let's look at an example on how do we find uh, any any um, any epsilon for any delta for give for a given epsilon you know so and in this case this is what we call to to prove the limit using the epsilon delta definition of a limit all right so here they're asking us to prove the limit using the epsilon delta definition of the limit for a limit up to x plus 3 uh, as x approaches 5 equals to 13 all right so let's identify what we have first of all so number one we have that f of x equals to 2x plus 3 the limit l equals to 13 and a which is 
the value x approaches to that's equal to 5. All right. So here in this case, well, we need to come up with this with, with the following sentence right here. So, so we will our from the definition, the uh, the epsilon delta definition, if zero less than zero less than an absolute value of x minus a less than delta, then absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon all right so we're gonna we're gonna start working from here and then we are going to use this argument to prove that or uh, to get to the other to the, to the other expression you'll see how we're gonna do this well so uh, let's start with the with the then part of the sentence right here so in this case well f of x minus l less than epsilon where f of x is 2x plus 3 minus the limit which is 13 absolute value of all that less than or less than epsilon so combining these like terms in this case 3 minus 13 that's going to give us a 2x plus 10 or rather minus 10 less than epsilon and well in this case uh if we can if we factor 2x if we factor the 2 from 2x minus 10 we can get the following we can get the 2 times x minus 5 less than epsilon well what's our goal ultimately okay let me write down the goal over here so goal our goal is to get to zero less than absolute value of x minus a less than delta where in this case my x minus five less than delta so notice in this case we already have the x minus five and x minus five so let's solve that x for that x minus five on the inequality that we have in blue right here by dividing both sides by 2 and well comparing these two inequalities right here we say that delta equals to epsilon over 2 all right and of course we can see this graphically so let's have a look again at um, another animation here so notice i have the function here f of x equals to 2x plus 3 and we want to compute the limit as x approaches to a equals 5 in this case you might want to use the slider over here so and well so for any given epsilon and let me keep this simple that means that for any given epsilon uh, delta will be epsilon over 2 so if i go to delta okay let's say epsilon needs 0.5 notice in this case how is how the delta is too big i need to make it uh, in this case smaller by a half so if i do 0.25 oh it's there all right 0.25 which is half of 0.5 that's going to be within the limit for the epsilon value if we go a little bit larger well in this case it's out of the bound but anything smaller than that should be within the limit right so that's pretty much what our um, epsilon delta uh, definition is going to be in graph form so this is this graph right here uh, supports our conclusion very well with i mean about the um, the epsilon delta definition all right well so that's uh, that's one example uh, a numerical example in which we we prove a limit however well not a numerical example actually a symbolic example we're going to be given here um, 
a numerical example. So in this case, they're giving us a value, a, a particular value for epsilon. Let's find that one for uh, for delta. And in this case, we're going to express this as an interval um, up to numbers. You'll see as some. This is going to be something like from the homework question. You were given a function. Find the find the corresponding delta as an interval. All right. So what's f of x here, number one? So f of x is three x plus two, l equals to five, and the value of a for which we are centering this is, or we're finding the limit at is at x equals to one or a equals to 1 in this case. Alright, so again we're going to start with um, with the inequality f of x minus l less than epsilon but in this case we're given a value for epsilon, let's find, let's write down the, val the function first so that's 3x plus 2 minus l which is 5 less than epsilon which is 0 0.01 okay so in this case well so <clears throat> let's simplify this so 3x plus 2 minus 5 so that's 3x minus 3 less than 0 0.01 and well factoring out the 3 x minus 1 less than 0 0.01 and in this case well x minus 1 absolute value of x minus 1 less than 0 0.01 over 3 all right so that's the limit part. Let's see the x minus a part. So, because again, our goal here is to zero less than x minus a less than delta or zero less than x minus one less than delta. So in this case, comparing the inequalities, notice we have this right here. All right, we have them both the same. So from here, we can set delta equal to 0 0.01 over 3. That means 0 0.01 over 3. And well, that means that our for an epsilon 0 0.01, we will have an in, in, in the form of an interval. We'll have x in between 0 0.99, or rather, okay, let me do the whole thing first. So that'll be 1 minus 0 0.01 over 3, and 1 plus 0 0.01. over 3. And in other words, uh, simply getting this into, well, three decimal places is fine. 0 0.997 and 1.003. Alright, so that's where x lies around with an epsilon of 0 0.01. Of course, if we increase the value of epsilon to say 0.5, well, we will have a wider range for the x values. All right, so typically, well, for an introductory calculus course like this course, like for which this video is intended for, we keep this type of examples to linear functions because uh, when it comes to quadratic functions and even radical functions, which for which I'm going to do one example of each, uh, these are more advanced examples, and there are aspects of the process of the of the epsilon delta process proof that mm, very oftentimes are hard to see. So of course I'm just going to do a couple of examples here on the video, but on the exam or on the homework I'm going to be limiting to give you uh, just a linear versions. All right. Okay, so let's prove the limit using the epsilon delta definition for x squared plus x squared equals to 4 as x approaches to x, x approaches to. All right. So uh, 
So number one, let's identify the f of x. Oops. Which in this case is x squared. And what else do we have? The limit, which is L equals to 4, and the center value, A equals to 2, which is the value X is approaching to. And of course, using the definition, so if 0 less than, oops, absolute value of X minus A less than delta, then absolute value of F of X minus L less than Epsilon. All right. So let's start with the epsilon part. F of x equal f of x minus l rather less than epsilon. Uh, and in this case, our f of x is x squared minus l, which is four, and that less than epsilon. All right. So here is the thing. Here's where algebra is going to come into play for a while. And at the same time, so we're going to make some assumptions that are, well, you'll see. So number one, we can factor this as a difference of squares. That's x minus, that's x minus uh, 2 times x plus 2, less than epsilon. All right. So that's because that's a difference of squares. So here is the thing. In this case, we want to, uh, if, if, we do the, if we do the usual, you know, okay, let me do this on the, uh, slightly on the side. So we want to get our, okay, as a goal, is that zero less than x minus two, less than delta. So if we do this, see what we're going to get in this case. See, um, we're going to get the following, like x minus 2, epsilon over x, the absolute value of x plus 2. So as opposed to the example that we already did, we only got over here on the left and on the right hand side of the inequality, the epsilon over a pure number. That is unfortunately not the case anymore. And we need to do some work with this x plus 2 to turn that into a number. So we need to bound, uh, to, to give a numerical bound in order to make it more, you know, so we can get a, 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 a delta in terms of a number, a pure number, not a, not a variable. So, and that's typically the, 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 the tricky part. So let me raise this and let me make an assumption. So here, uh, or rather rather than an assumption this is more like intuition so what's uh, what, what what's the, t the intuition about well so in this case uh, on the on the number line so on the number line what's going on so notice we're trying to approach two that's larger than one and smaller than three all right so in this case we are trying to so that's our center x minus 2 and well uh, because we're trying to approach uh, x equals to 2 well in this case think of x being anywhere around 2 well how far around well of course this could be between 1 and 3 or between 0 and 4 or between negative 1 and 5. You can pick your favorite interval, but again, but again, in this case, we're trying to make it as close as possible to 2. So that's why I'm using 0, and, I mean 1 and 3. Of course, we could have say 1.9 uh, and 2.1 or 1.8 and 2.2, but in this case, to to be more practical in this case, we I'm going to set this instead less than one. So I'm going to bound it to one. That is, uh, the x is x is one unit from two, uh, at most one unit from two, and those bounds are one and three. All right. So what are we going to do with this inequality? I'm going to work this inequality on uh, this x minus two less than one and I'm gonna make it um, I'm gonna turn this x minus 2 inequality equal to x 
plus two and come up with a number in there all right so in this case okay let me let me um actually well you know what to make this to make it this to make this a lot easier let's say x minus two absolute value of x minus two is less than epsilon over absolute value of x plus two all right so i'm going to turn that x plus two into a pure number not a variable anymore so this is what we're going to do so i'm going to drop the absolute value bars for the quantity that i for the inequality that i have highlighted when we do that x minus two becomes less than one and greater than negative one you know so in this case so i need to turn this x minus two into an x plus two in order to do that all we need to do is add four to the three sides of the inequality all right and that's going to give us uh three three is less than x plus two which is less than five all right now um we could go back to absolute value inequality right here if we had both numbers the same on the lower bound as on the upper bound uh, and then we can just go back to absolute value notation if like in this case they're the same number but with opposite sign but in this case it's not the same there these two numbers are not the same one is a three one is a five if this three right here instead we're a negative five well then we can do and well here is the real trick here of course something that we hopefully agree here do we all agree that uh for example let me do some scratch work so if i have x less than three which is less than five again let me rewrite it again this three is also greater than two which is also greater than one which is also greater than zero which is also greater than negative one etc right so that follows a logical sentence so in this case i could also say that this is also less than negative five because of course it's logical that negative five is less than three all these numbers are going to be larger than negative five so we can in a way if you will you can drop this part if you want and rewrite x plus 2 less than 5 all right and this is where we go back to the, the to finding the delta and x minus 2 absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon over five all right and well this completes the proof right here well this completes the fun the finding of the de of the corresponding delta Comp set these two pretty much equal to each other in a way so from here we can conclude that delta equals to epsilon over five now let's have a look at this graphically from desmos of course and in this case well uh things are going to look a little bit different because well you'll see so what do i have the function f of x equals x squared and the limit to be evaluated at x equals to two so that limit is going to be four okay so that's the limit we want to prove so for any epsilon in this case i chose epsilon equals to 0.5 what did we get for delta delta equals epsilon over 5 so any number divided by 5 for epsilon which is going to be delta so 0.5 divided by 5 that's going to be 0.1 and notice from the picture i'm zooming in notice how we have these points inside the 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 bounds or the region formed by the epsilon of po of plus and minus 0.5 you know so centered centered at at y at y equals 4 so between 3.5 and 4.5 i have the values of x 
of which is correspond to delta 1.9 and 2.1 they're both inside now notice that a number large a delta a slightly larger than epsilon equals to 5 still works you know i'm going i'm going to slide this to to the right to make that value larger but why until we get to 1.1 to three so point 12 it's it's still a good bound why is in this case uh, a number still a little bit larger as opposed to what we did with the linear one why is it still working well recall that here we did a little trick here of by intuition of approximating that x minus 2 and bound it to 1 of course we could have bounded it a little bit to a little bit larger interval and 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 still get and get these values between the corresponding epsilon so this is what happens with the quadratic functions and like in the next example this is what can happen as well with uh, with the radical function so let's do this one this radical function uh, we want to prove the following limit we're going to prove that the limit of the square root of 10 minus 3x as x approaches negative 2 equals to 4 so let's start again by defining the the function identifying the function the limit and the value that this is centered at so f of x equals to 10 minus 3x l equals to 4 and a equals to negative 2 so let's start with uh, f of x uh, with the f of x minus l part so f of x minus l less than epsilon right and in this case the, ab the absolute value of the square root of 10 minus 3x minus the limit which is 4 less than epsilon so in this case uh, our goal again is to get a de the corresponding delta from zero less than absolute value of x minus a less than delta and zero less than x minus a which in this case a is negative two but minus negative two but that's going to be a plus two less than delta so somehow from this inequality we're going to make make that look like x plus two all right so let's do the work okay so uh, uh, well as opposed to the previous examples that we did we cannot factor anything out however we're going to do the trick or well not necessarily a trick it's algebra ultimately uh, the algebraic technique of multiplying by the conjugate of this of this um, of these two terms you know so let's see square root of 10 minus 3x minus 4 uh, and I'm going to divide this by 1 and then I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate 10 minus 3x plus 4 that's the conjugate And let's do some algebra here. Yeah, this one is going to be a very interesting algebra problem. Actually, that's very similar to the limit problem that you saw in the previous videos. So, and in this case, yes, you might want to foil this, of course. If that works for you, that's fine. However, think, recall as in, the, as in the limit problems that we did in the other videos, this is of the form A minus B, A plus B, which is the factor form of sum a squared minus b squared all right so what's going to happen in this case so by that property instead of uh, again instead of uh, foiling this i'm going to square square root of 10 minus 3x minus 4 squared and in the denominator I will just multiply across 1 times this radical, which is going to be radical, radical 10 minus 3x plus 4. And that less than epsilon. Okay? So, 
let's keep working with this well uh, the good thing here the radical cancels the square and that simplifies to absolute value of 10 minus 3x minus 16 divided by the absolute value I mean divided by the, the square root of 10 minus 3x plus 4 less than epsilon all right so okay so let's keep simplifying this so that's going to give us um, negative 3x minus 6 under the absolute value and divided by the square root of 10 minus 3x plus 4 and then what okay so what are we going to do here so in this case I'm going to use properties of absolute value so the absolute value of a quotient is the quotient of two absolute values at the same time I'm going to factor out a negative 3 so negative 3 times x plus 2 all right I know from here you're already seeing that x plus 2 that we are supposed to get at the end of the, the finding the delta and in this case for the denominator notice I'm not using notice I'm not going to use the absolute value bars because this radical function radical functions will never output any negative values so in this case there's no need to there's no need at all to keep using those absolute values which is great and then on top of that add a 4 well that's always positive so in this case we're going to save a lot of work with treating that uh, absolute value as a compound inequality like in the previous example and actually the trick that we will that we will use here well actually i'm not going to use this epsilon yet so okay let me keep using epsilon so i'm going to simplify this absolute value term in the numerator so i'm going to take out this number outside of the absolute value but keep in mind that when we take the absolute value of a negative number we are that turns into a positive 3 absolute value of x plus 2 over the square root of 10 minus 3x plus 4 all right okay so here is the thing so if we wanted to solve for okay as a scratch work get me you don't need to write this is this is fine so if we wanted to do Uh, to solve for x plus 2 absolute value of x plus 2 less than epsilon um, over 3 times the square root of 10 minus 3x plus 4 again what are we going to get what are we getting here here we're getting uh, another delta that contains x and we don't want that we want a numerical value so we need to somehow get rid of that square root of 10 minus 3x plus 4 and turn it into a number so what's going to be the trick here okay check this out so uh i know that and this is again some kind of intuition that just like we did uh with the previous example with the quadratic one so hopefully we all agree that the square root of 10 minus 3x plus 4 hopefully we agree that this is greater than 1 I know it could be greater than 2 as well it could be greater than 3 as well it could be greater than 4 as well or greater than 2.1 2.2 1.97 and your favorite number you know well not just any number maybe not greater than than 5 per, for example but I mean for the sake of simplicity let's suppose that it's greater than 1 all right now I need to recall some of the properties of, ine of inequalities when we have an inequality of the form a minus b this is the same as saying 1 over a 1 over b as long as we flip or rather as long as we flip the inequality symbols you know as we know we reverse for example what i'm trying to say here is um that 1 over the square root of 10 minus 3x is of plus 4 
is less than one also i mean one over one that's not, that's really not going to change all right so from here we're going to take this back to less than three absolute value of x plus two over one why is that because of this because of this inequality this is the same as well and this is less than epsilon and in this case well solving for the absolute value of x plus 2 that's uh, epsilon over 3 all right and in this case well coming back to our original goal our original goal is to obtain an, an inequality of this form we got it right here this means therefore delta equals epsilon over 3. of course these epsilons can vary for example if instead of setting this quantity equal to i mean rather greater than one if you set it greater than two then you get a different epsilon or greater than three then you get a different epsilon so this is going to vary depending on your on how you set up this inequality and i know this last couple of of examples might be a little bit confusing because they don't follow the same uh, straightforward idea as they do the ones for for the linear function so for this one uh, as far as the Desmos demonstrate the de demonstration I will let you work on on that one on your own so you can play with different values of X of epsilon and Delta so you can get so you can justify what we just did over here in the meantime let's call it a day for this video